Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We serve an awesome God. Amen. 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 How many of you know the devil's defeated? Amen. That's right. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Did you come expecting? Oh, yes, sir. Amen. 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 Praise God. It's, it's good when you can have fun. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I have a word for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you. And Lord, we thank you for the living word of God. Thank you, Lord, for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that every ear will be a listening ear and every heart a receptive heart unto the word of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 If you would go with me, please, to 1 John, the first epistle of John, chapter 2, please. I want to talk to you about the anointing that is within you. Every one of you in here that is born again, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have an anointing in you. Amen? Yeah. Blessed be the name. And that's how God, that's how we know things. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, But you have an unction or an anointing, but you have an unction. You have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now, how do you know all things physically? No. You know all things by in your spirit. Amen. You know, there's some things that you just know that you can't put your finger on, but you just know because on the inside of you. That's right. That's how I knew I was called to preach. When I was born again, Mom invited me to a revival meeting. And when I was born again, there was, some, there was something on the inside of me that wasn't there prior. Just like, my, well, just like that I'm conscious of my limbs. You're conscious of your limbs. I was conscious of something there that wasn't there before. How was I conscious of it? The anointing within. The anointing. And, and if you read the epistle, now let me share this with you. Man divided the Bible in chapter and verses. But John wrote a letter. And if you follow him, you'll find out he's talking about false teachers in the ministry. Amen? But he says, you know all things. Have you just been around somebody and you just picked up in your spirit and this just ain't right? Why? Because the Holy Ghost is letting you know. Amen? Right in here. This is where he speaks at. Right in here. In your spirit your spirit is a safe guide if you've been born again. Those that have not been born again, their spirit is not a safe guide. Why do you say that, Brother Dennis? Well, the voice of your spirit is your conscience. Are you hearing? Conscience, well, many people out in the world, their conscience, the, they do something wrong. Many, well, their conscience might have bothered them, at, bothered them at first, but then they kept on doing according to the book of Timothy. The fourth chapter, they have, they seared their conscience, and now it doesn't bother them no more. If you're going to know that, if you're going to get acquainted with the anointing that's within you, you've got to walk in love and forgiveness. That's right. You've got to be, as, as it says in the book of Ephesians, tenderhearted. If you're not tenderhearted, you're not going to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Because many times the Lord will give you direction without you even having to ask Him if you're tenderhearted. He gets your He gets your attention through your conscience. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Feeling is the voice of the body. You get up in the middle of the night to go get a recess, Carrie, and you stub your toe. What happens? Ow! That's the voice of the body. Are you here? Amen. But when you do something wrong, 
If you're sharp with someone, you don't have to be sharp with someone. You do something wrong or say something or do something or get out of order and you're born again, that conscience, the Holy Ghost is preaching to you to you on the inside and the best preacher there is is the Holy Ghost in you if you've been born again. There's people that cannot sleep because their conscience bothering them. Now I'm going to say this. I'm going to take you somewhere in the Word. But every one of us in here can lift our hands. If we would have listened to something on the inside, we wouldn't have did a number of things, would we? Amen. Many people wouldn't have married some of the people they married. Afterwards, afterwards you hear them say, I wish I would have listened to something on the inside. That something on the inside was God trying to tell you something, but you weren't taught to listen to that. Amen. Now that's how I met, I met my wife. Oh, thank you, Lord. I love the Holy Ghost. See, if we're going to hear, we've got to be tenderhearted. If you're not if you're not tenderhearted, someone that walks in love and forgiveness, you're not going to hear the voice of God. Amen. If you live in this flaky flesh. But I was invited up to North Mississippi. To, and when I was, I saw what the pastor and his wife was trying to do. They was trying to set me up with Nikki. <laughs> and I thought to myself, look what they're trying to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, and when we left, I preached that morning. We went out to eat. Nikki went with us, and Mama was with me. And Mama said, What do you think about that girl? That young girl? I said, Mama, she's not for me. I'm two and a half hours away, and there was other things I would share with Mother. And I said, She's not for me, Mom. Now, see, that's from the flesh. My reason, see, reason is the voice of the soul. Because that's what talks us out of obeying God. When God is speaking to our conscience to do something, we step into reason. And we begin to think about it when we do, we've lost it. That's right. Are you here? When God speaks to you, if you think about it, you're not going to do it. So just go ahead and obey God. Amen. Well, they came the following, not quite a week, the following um, Friday or Saturday, I believe it's Friday, to uh, Florence, and she asked her, are you around Florence, Mississippi? We're bringing Nikki with us, and we're going to eat at Barry's, and I found out later she was coming for a jewelry party, but it's canceled, but they came on anyway, and, and so I met them at Barry's to eat, and then they were headed back up North Mississippi, and I said, well, would you like to go to the outlet mall and walk around? And so we went to the outlet mall and walked around a little bit. Forty minutes later, they came by and picked her up with the North Mississippi. Well, when I was going back to McGee, Mississippi, I lived in a Sunday school room for one year and three months. Can you live in a Sunday school room for one year and three months? <laughs> Amen. That's my superintendent used to say, the prophet's room. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, I, I lived in a little room that I go when I used, used the restroom or take a shower, I had to go outside. In, into the bathrooms and so on. Uh, but I was content there. Amen. I was content there. Amen. Godliness with contentment. Amen. Amen. Is great gain. Amen. 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 Be content wherever you are in life. Right. The Lord knows where you're at. But you know what He's looking at? He's looking at faithfulness. Well, I'm headed back to my one room living. And when I'm going, I'm on 49 headed south. And I says, Lord, she's not for me. This just validates it. I remember saying it or thinking it so loud. Because this lady don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And uh, she talks a lot more now. Praise the Lord. I've learned a lot from her. To be quiet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Some people just need to be quiet. I remember years ago I was in, and I'll get back to the story. Years ago I was uh, living in South Jackson. And this was uh, around when my first son was born, around 92, 93. The Lord spoke to me and says, the best wisdom there is is silence. There's sometimes we can just be quiet. Amen. Amen. The best wisdom, oh, thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit just gave me, and over there in James, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak 
and slow to wrath. But a lot of times Christians practice that verse in reverse. They're quick to speak, quick to wrath. Amen, or only. Amen. God wants us to be slow to speak. That's right. Slow to wrath. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Incline your ear. And so I learned a lot from her. She was quiet, and I thought to myself, Dear Lord, I need to be more quiet. Amen. <laughs> The, the quieter you are, you don't expose yourself so much. <laughs> well, anyway, I says, Lord, she's not for me. See, I'm up here in my mental faculties. I said, she's not for me. And then while I'm driving down 49 to McGee, Mississippi, she just keeps floating up. <clears throat> to my mental faculties, right out of here, right out of my conscience. I said, Lord, are you trying to say something to me? Well, we gave it one more time. One more time. I said, we're going out on Wednesday, the 8th of March, on a Wednesday. And so I was off on Wednesdays at the dealership. They gave me Wednesday. Of course, they closed on Sundays, but Wednesdays was my day off. And so we went out on Wednesday. Oh, no, my goodness, there was fireworks. I said, Lord, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I almost messed up listening to my mental faculties. But see, what I didn't tell you is, when I came, I, I, before I met her, now this is the Holy Ghost, we're talking about the anointing on the inside, so listen up, because if I wouldn't have listened to it, I wouldn't be married to her and have two beautiful boys. That's right. Amen. Amen. Are right. you here? We're talking about the anointing in you. You can violate it if you want, or you can, be, or you can learn to work with God. That's right. Well, the week before I was to go up north and preach, I canceled the meeting. I misinterpreted the word of the Lord. Somebody gave me a word to the Lord, and I was trying to buy a house at that time. I was getting tired of that one room, Sunday school room for a year. And I uh, ended up getting in there about a year and three months, but that's okay, though. I wanted my shower back to be inside the house, man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It didn't have no, you know, it had light, but there wasn't no plug in in there for heat in the wintertime. And so I had to run an extension cord from a Sunday school room and in there and let the heater run a little bit before I got in the shower. Amen. And so uh, I, I misinterpreted the word of the Lord and I thought it was don't go up north. And I didn't go. So the very next morning I'm at the dealership. There was a light rock rain, Brian. And all of a sudden my conscience was bothering me. Listen to me carefully. This is where it's at in here. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just reminded me. Remember what he said. God is a spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's right. Amen. Amen. And your conscience is the voice of your spirit. Obey it. What did Paul say in the epistles? Go back and read. Paul said, this one thing I do, always obey my conscience. And then Paul said, having a good conscience. Amen. Amen. And the way you're going to be led by the Holy Ghost is through your conscience. But if you live in sin and live in the flesh and indulge in this world, your conscience is going to be seared and you're not going to know the voice of God because you're going to have to have a tender conscience. That's right. Seared and start over. Yep, start it over. Repent of it. Get right with God and start living tender before Him and then get tender again. Well, we went out. Well, okay, well, I canceled the meeting. This was before I met her. And my conscience is bothering me. And I go and get into one of those high countries. And I pray in the spirit for about 33 minutes. As hard, as fast as I could. When I did, I had the sense in here. And of course, my mental faculties picked it up, Jay. I need to go up to North Mississippi. And I, and I called and says, listen, I'll come. And, and they said, well... And, and, and then the minister called me and says, are you, you, you coming? I said, yes, I'm coming. And I found out later, they told everyone that I wasn't coming. Well, when I went, I met Nikki. So see, how did I meet her? I listened to my conscience. Amen. And there were some people healed there as well. But, and, and, and the word of God went forth. But here in my conscience, right here, in my conscience, so they did. See, much is false because we don't obey our conscience. Many, thank you, Lord. Many, many, uh, many, many girls, young girls, this one just came to me, and I'm just going to give it to you, wouldn't have been.
been abducted and killed if they would have listened to something on the inside of them. Something was telling them, don't get in there. Just they had a bad feeling, but they thought, oh, what a handsome man he is. He seems nice. He's talking sweet to me. Or it could be vice versa. Amen? Right. But see, the Bible says you have an unction and anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. The born again Christian, you should not be caught by surprise. Are you hearing me? Why? Because you know God, He lives in you. And He's not caught by a surprise. He's not. Amen? <clears throat> and many of you weren't caught by a surprise when I said earlier some of the things we did when we were learning to flow with the Holy Ghost. Why did I do that? So it told me not to do that. And I did. I shouldn't have did it. Well, see, you're learning. You knew you weren't caught by surprise because you heard something prior. Amen? You know, it's just. It's just like Chris Petey. Back in the back. Look at him, Chris. In the back. The one that his birthday is July the 19th. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Chris comes over. I had a four. No, I had a, a guide four by four. And uh, Chris bought a boat up in Georgia. Well, he put a down payment on it. And I said, well, I'm on vacation that week. And he says, can I use your, your truck? And I said, sure, well, I'm on vacation. I'll just go with you. We just bring your boat back here to Mississippi. And so the night before, in here in my conscience, I'm like, oh. Well, and I had to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I started praying in the Holy Ghost, Jim, Nikki, praying in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, in here, it was so strong. In here, I sensed in the Spirit, don't go on that trip. Not a voice, just a sense. If I go on that trip, our lives are in danger. And I says, Lord, I already gave him a word and told him I was, he could use my truck. I says, Lord, you're going to have to give him the same thing that you've given me. And so I got up that morning and went to his house. And when I opened my mouth, he bent over like this right here. He said, it's like our lives are in danger. And how did the, now, we didn't have nothing spectacular, but I'm going to share this with you. Y'all listen to me carefully. Many times the supernatural is being activated in you, but you're looking for something spectacular That's right. with the senses. Lord, write something up in the sky not to go to that place. No, the supernatural is already in you. Right. Obey it. Amen. Because if you don't, I remember hearing about a minister and his wife. They were going out on a, on a vacation. And something said to them, wait 15 minutes. But they didn't. They were in urge. And something seemed to say in their conscience. And their mental faculties picked it up. They just had an impression. I'm trying my best to get it over to you. They had an impression. They have a spiritual feeling, an intuition, an inward witness. Wait 15 minutes. Well, they didn't. And by the grace of God, she lived. They had a horrible automobile accident. But if they would have waited 15 minutes, it would have been avoided. Amen? Amen. Now, we see that you know all things on the inside if we listen to God. Look at Romans chapter 8 real quick. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 14 through 16. Romans 8, 14 through 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, the King James says, itself. I like another translation that says himself. Amen. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our what? Spirit. Spirit. spirit that we are the children of God. Not only does he bear witness with your spirit that you are the children of God, he bears witness with your spirit concerning everything else. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, does it say... He bears witness with our bodies. Okay. No, that's how the devil gets people confused. Well, you know, Brother Dennis, I feel like this is the way to go. Well, explain your feeling to me. Well, I really want to go. It's going to be fun. You're looking at it from the flesh. That's right. And, it, and the Lord could be leading that way. 
But there was times I wanted to go a direction that's going to be fun on the flesh. But on the inside, the Lord said no. Amen. Amen. Know the difference between the flesh and your spirit. And God might lead you that way. But then again, you know, there's been times if I, if I did what my flesh wanted, I got in trouble. I said, Lord, afterwards, after it was over, I said, thank you, God, for saving me. I wanted to go that way. Amen. Oh, man, the Lord, the Lord knows more. Can I give you something? The Lord knows more than you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes, he does. I know we think, and you know, teenagers, they think, well, they think they know more than mama, papa, mama, daddy. They know more than you. Amen. They've been there. Amen. Amen. I used to think when I was a teenager, mama, you know, you think you know more, but mama and daddy knew more. Amen? Yes. Yes. Don't we wish we would have listened many times. Not only to God, but to our parents. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, the Bible says in that 14th verse, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you can expect to be led. Amen, Sherry? You can expect to be led by the Spirit of God. And there's times that I pray that the Holy Ghost uh, lit a light bulb on the inside in my uh, spirit. And you can turn over if you want and look at it. But it says in Proverbs 20 and 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Where's your spirit at right here? Thank you, Lord. The Lord just brought this to me to give you this. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow forth rivers of living water. This fake king of the spirit, you know, because Jesus was, no, you know, was talking about the Holy Spirit that was coming. So where's your spirit at right here? Where's your conscience at when you do something wrong? Right here. Amen. Get familiar with it. Because that's how God leads you. Many times people are looking for something spectacular like an angel visit. Thank God God does. But you know the devil can turn into an angel of life. Yes, and if you're always searching the spectacular and wanting the spectacular, you can be deceived that way. It's just like I know a brother that moves in that realm of seeing angels. And, you know, and called up. You know what he says? He says, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Je Jesus appeared to him one time, and he says, it, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? And Jesus smiled at him and showed him his hands. He's the only one that has the hole in his hands. Amen. Not in his wrists. In his hands, the Bible says. Amen. 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 So if you're having some experiences with God, test the spirits as the word of God says. Test the spirits, whether they will be of God. Amen? And one way you test them, is, and the Bible says in 1 John, you know, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. But every spirit that denies it is the Antichrist spirit. That's right. That's right. Amen? So test the spirits. Thank God God can move by an angel. He can appear to you. You can, you know, you can be called up to heaven. God has many ways, but he's the one that determines. But let me say this. Listen to me carefully. The primary way, the number one way that God leads all of his people is by the inward witness That's right. in here. And whose responsibility is it to get, get familiar with it? That's right. Yours. Yours and mine. Some of the mistakes I made in the past, I thought, why wow, did not listen to something on the inside? And then the go-ahead is it keeps coming to you. It's just like I heard one minister. He was in the Assemblies of God. And he was pastor in an Assembly of God church, but he left it before he should have. Sister Jesse, Ozzy. And when he did, he's out uh, preaching, looking, you know, trying out in other churches. And he's in prayer. And he's in the sanctuary praying, Pharaoh. And he found himself out in the middle, in front of the church. He said, now, how did I get out here? He had such a burden to go back to that church he left that he didn't want to go back there. God went through with him there. All right. But he don't even remember going through the church and going outside. It was such a burden he was in here. 
And he would be in prayer, praying about his meeting. And while he was praying about the meeting he is at, it just kept coming up back to see when you're in prayer, you're in the spirit. That's when you start moving up over there into that other realm. And while he's over there in the spirit, that previous church keeps coming to him. He says, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> How many of us do that? Amen. He says, Lord, he said, if this is you to speak to my wife, she's got the spirit too. Guys, you're not the only one that's got the spirit. Amen. Right. Amen. You make does too. That's right. And so he said, speak to my wife. And so we waited 30 days. And they were washing and drying dishes together. He just looked over there and said, has the Lord said anything to you lately, honey? She said this. Listen. Listen. She said, if he has, I don't know it. How many is that us? She said, if he had, and then he got a look, because he didn't say nothing to her. And then he looked over there at her again and said, has the Lord spoke to you while they were washing and drying dishes about going back to such and such church? She said, oh, I thought that was just me. <laughs> he said, he said, let me ask you something. From the natural, from the physical, do you want to go back there? She said, Lord, no. Now, they love the people. Now, here tell you, we love the people. And uh, he said, well, you're not going to be thinking about something you don't want to do. He saw that it was the, uh, and she had the same thing in her spirit that he had. He asked the Lord to speak to his wife. But see, she didn't know it was God speaking. So many people are wanting to hear. If you did hear an audible voice like you hear me speak, it would probably drive you out of your mind. Because yeah. y'all heard me tell about the story the lady that had all of the voices. She was seeking one because at that time, Brother Oral Roberts had one, and she wanted, uh, she sought an audible voice, and guess who accommodated? <laughs> the devil did. That's right. Mama, at her age, has only heard the audible voice of the Lord that I know of three, three times in her whole life in 80-something years. God normally doesn't move with, like you hear me speak. Are you here? And if you do, or if I do, if I hear an audible voice, and God can, I'm judging it by the word. And not only am I judging it by the word, I'm judging it, does it bear witness with my conscience? Right. Does it bear witness on the inside? If it don't, I'm throwing it away. Come on. Even though it was audible. It, a vision, listen to me carefully, you need this. A vision, dream, audible voice, Anything in this area that I am talking about, if it's not in line with your spirit and the word of God, trash it. Amen. The devil trying to take you another direction off of course with the spirit of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. I won't accept any dream, any visitation, any anything, suggestion, or feeling if it can't be proven, hallelujah, by the spirit of God. Are you here? Well, look here with me. Look at Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Real quickly. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, let's just look at Acts chapter 27, verse 9 through 11. We see here someone being led by what I'm talking about. The inward witness. Now when much time was spent. And when sailing was now dangerous. Notice that. Sailing was now dangerous. Go back and read this old chapter. When, when, you have, when you have some time. But I'm not going to read it all for time's sake. Now when much time was spent. And when sailing was now dangerous. Because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with her in much damage, not only of the lady and ship, but also of our lives, just like that I perceived me and Chris being. We didn't go to Georgia. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship 
More than those things which were spoken by Paul. Now, how did Paul say? Did he say an angel appeared to him? He didn't, did he, Tina? Did he say, I saw a vision? No. Now, we find out later an angel appears to him and later. But Paul perceived it first. And the angel appeared to him and says, no one's lives will be lost. But the ship will be lost. We find that. But Paul didn't get that information uh, first. He got, he got it. He perceived it first. I perceive. How did Paul perceive it? Physically? No. It looked pretty outside that day. How did Paul perceive it? Spiritually. Right here in his conscience. That's right. He, he perceived it in here like you and I perceived not to go to Georgia. How did we perceive it? In here? Oh, it, oh thank you, Lord. That's good. Listen to me what I'm about to tell you. This is spiritual. This is spiritual leading. It's through your spirit. Amen? That's the leading of God. Your spirit is how God's going to use you to, to guide you as a spiritual leading. So when you perceive something, don't push it off. Amen? If you push it off, you're going to get in trouble. That's right. You're going to get in trouble. So if you have a perception on the inside, listen to it. You know, sometimes women, especially homemakers, they're quiet at home. They're not as busy. Not that they don't do anything, but some of them are quiet. They can pick up things in here. Why? Because they're more still. See, the stiller you get, the Bible says, be still, know that I'm God. When we come in here to pray, I'll sit there sometimes and I'll just close my eyes and I'll be still. And I'll just expect with my eyes closed. I can, well, the sermon that I'm preaching this morning, I got it right there with my eyes closed, praying in the Holy Ghost. The sermon I'm preaching this morning, this is what he wanted me to preach this morning. So, um, I just, I come, the Bible says, be still, know that I'm God. Get still before him. Close your eyes and meditate upon him and expect something. If you don't expect nothing, you're not going to get nothing. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but this is real. Right. I've seen it too many times, and you have too. That's right. Blessed be the name. Well, Paul perceived it in his spirit that this hurt, this void, in other words, we say this trip, we don't need to go on it. Same way that we perceived not to go to Georgia, and he never bought the boat. Now, look at verse 21 through 25 of Acts 27. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete and to have, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there's, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God Whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Therefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told thee. Now, see, but Paul picked it up first in here. Amen. The supernatural is in you. If you've been born again and you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the supernatural is in you. Listen to it. Amen. If you don't, it can cost you. There's been people that were going to work. I've heard in the past. Some of them to the World Trade Center. They were going to work all of a sudden and they just had an intuition. Don't go today or had a dream. Don't go. And they didn't go and their lives were saved. That's right. How did they perceive it? Through their spirit. Amen. You can't receive these things when I'm talking about physically. No, you can't. And many people want God to speak to them physically. Well, Lord, uh, should I marry this person? Well, the devil might speak to you. He said, yeah, that's the one, and didn't you marry the devil? <laughs> I remember Mama used to tell me when I was a kid. Mama used to tell me beauty's on the skin deep. Got that right. Amen. 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 Only skin deep, but when you get to know a little bit, you're like, my mistake. <laughs> my mistake, boy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, what, but, but on the inside, you would already know these things. Yeah, you would. 
Amen. But see, so many times we want to walk by the flesh. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, that's how I knew I was called to preach. Was by the inward witness. Right in here. Right in here. And that's how you're going to know things. In your spirit. Somebody says, Brother Dennis, how you know? You just know because God lives in you. That's right. I say, you know things. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let me share this with you, though. Don't let the devil trip you up because I don't go by something just because it's there one time. The flesh could bring something up to you that it wants, and it will. You know, I was reading last night something that was in my notes that has been there for a while. I don't know how long. <laughs> and, and it, you know, we keep... This flesh, we know exactly when we sit down what kind of ice cream we want. And we even know if it's not the brand. <laughs> hey, me like Bluebell, isn't it? There you go. We, you know, we can sit down, we, we, this flesh, we can tell you what, what we want, and we can tell you if it's the brand or not, but many times we can't. When you ask people to say, well, do you know if you're the will of God or not? Do you know if you're pleasing God? They can't tell you the things that they should be able to tell you. They should be, you should be able to tell people spiritually what you tell people physically. That's right. Amen. Amen. Did you know if that was God or not? Well, I don't know. So you should be able to tell. You can tell me what you heard from so-and-so physically. You see how far off we are many times? We can tell people this, that, about what we want, where we're going in the flesh. But... When, we, when it comes to asking about spiritual things, we, we, I don't know. Well, you should know. We should live more. That other world is more real than this world. That's right. It was before this world. In the beginning, God created the heavens, heavens. and then the earth. That's right. And so, let's get acquainted with him. And one way, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, Dale. So what are we going to do? Like I was talking to somebody just here recently. They said, well, you know, I said, uh, I said, read a chapter a day. When you do, read it, meditate on it. I said, when you're working throughout the day, when you do it, that one chapter, say the first chapter of Matthew about that, you know, Gabriel appearing to Mary, telling her about Jesus, that which is conceived of you is of the Holy Ghost, and you shall bring forth a child, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his... His people from their sins. Well, what you do, you read that one chapter and you think about it all through the day. An angel appeared. Use your imagination. And then you the next day, you read another chapter. You have two or three or four, whatever. Suits your fancy. Whatever you feel like. Read the whole book. But when you do, meditate on it. When you do, when you meditate, you feed your spirit. You know that? Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When you meditate on the word of God and read it, you, your spirit is feeding. And when you meditate, and it's growing, and then you will know things, you will you be just walking, and the Lord will speak to you. Just like one ministry is driving his car, the Lord said, look to your left, land. He looked, there was a, uh, he looked out there and the land was for sale. If I remember correctly, the sign was if you couldn't see, the sign was laying on the ground. He bought it and made, he was, uh, he would buy land and sell it and make money. He was a businessman. So, see, God is speaking and God is living in you. Let's take time to read the word of God. Let's pray. And when you pray, don't do all the talking. Sit down there and be quiet and expect something with your eyes closed. Amen. And he'll speak back to you. Amen? Amen? But if you're doing all the talking, you don't expect him to speak back to you, you're not going to hear anything. Are you here? Or are you going home? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Well, this is good stuff because you know what? This is reality and you need it. That's right. Yes. Because there's going to be right down the road. It's just like this one lady that went up to Brother Moore. Brother Moore always talked. There shall, you know, Psalms 91.10, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. He preached that, and she goes downtown and gets her purse snatched. So she goes back to Brother Moore. She says, well, I went downtown and got my purse snatched. 
And you said this right here. And he asked her, he said, well, what was going on on the inside of you before you went? She said, well, something told me not to go. Well, there you go. That's why you got your purse snatched. God was trying to keep your purse from being snatched. But you didn't listen. You was in a hurry trying to get to that blouse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, listen, if you need to wait 30 minutes, there's been times that maybe mother came in or, or Nikki's mother and all of a sudden we're going somewhere and, and my conscience just out of the blue started hurting. I said, I, need, I went into the closet, walk-in closet, not to disturb me, put a chair in there and pray for about 25 or 35 minutes. And then when I felt like I said, let's go now, many people would have left. I said, I can't leave right now. I might be interceding for one of your lives. Or my family's life. I know my daddy, he went home to be with the Lord at 91 and a half. And on his 73rd birthday, I went over there and he wasn't home, but my conscience started bothering me. I just sensed his life was in danger. Sure did. Since his life was in danger, what did I do? I threw caution to the wind and started praying in the spirit as hard and as fast as I could for about, I guess it's around 35 minutes. And I felt it leave. Then I found out later that something bad almost happened to him on his birthday night. Real bad. He didn't go into it because he wasn't the one to talk, was he, Sheila? He kept a lot of things to himself. So, uh, what about if I wouldn't have prayed and been, been sensitive to the Holy Ghost in here? He would have died and went to hell because he wouldn't say it at that time. And his 73rd birthday, going out to the Hill Club, the Coach Light Club, and whatever club, the Ramada Club, and but thank God Jesus wanted him saved and washed in the blood. He comes to me on his birthday night to pray him out of physical death and pray him out of hell. Amen. 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 Jesus, did you know that Jesus loves the sinner? Amen. Amen. That's, That's right. why he came. That's right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. If he didn't, we wouldn't be in here. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Blessed be. Amen. Pat. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Are you going to listen to that something on the inside of it? Amen. How do you get sensitive to it? Through fellowship. That's right. Reading the Bible and fellowship. Leave sin off. Leave it off. Because, it, it, you know, you might, you, there will be times where he still come to you. But when you live in tender hearted before him, you'll be able to hear his voice real easy. Yes, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So be tenderhearted toward people. Somebody does you wrong, forgive them. Amen. It's just like I heard my superintendent. Well, he wasn't the superintendent at that time. He used to be before the superintendent we have now. He had to go to a church because the church was in trouble. And he taught one of my classes, Brother Davis, and Brother Walter Davis. And, and so... He was talking about a guy who went into the church and said it in order. The guy came up to him in the church and spit right in his face. Somebody asked in the class, I don't think it was me. I, but anyway, somebody asked, bro, somebody asked, what, what'd you do? He said, I took my handkerchief out, wiped it off, and conducted the meeting. He didn't think no problem of it. Amen? Amen. By doing so, you give those other people authority over you. If you retaliate. Yes, you do. So just go ahead. You know, that's why the Bible says, why don't you just rather take wrong over there at First Thessalonians? You know, why don't you? You could be right, but just take wrong. I don't have to be right. You don't have to be right. You know what that is? It's pride. Mom, I'm going to have my way. Well, happy way and get sick and die early then. Are you here? Go home. I'm telling you the truth. There's many people still been alive today and they just judged themselves, repented. Ask God to forgive them and walk in love. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Two wrongs never make a right. Does it? Never right. Am I speaking the truth to you or am I not? Yes. Yes, I am. Amen. Amen. Praise God. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in here this morning and your heart was to stop beating, and you know on the inside, you know on the inside that if you was to die right now, you know you wouldn't see Jesus. You know, how do you know by the inside and your conscience? Your conscience is telling you you need to get things right. And this is the perfect day to obey your conscience. If that's you, you say, Brother Dennis, pray for me. Can you lift your hand up real quickly and put it right back down? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Thank you. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Maybe you might be in here and you say, Brother Dennis, I need a touch in my body. I need Jesus to heal me. And you say, will you pray for me? I sure will. He will heal you. You're going to leave out of here with it. You know, if you if you accept it, and it'll be manifested in your body. You say, pray for me, Brother Dennis. Let me see your hand. If you need a healing. Thank you. 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 Anybody else? Everybody that lifted your hand, I want you to come up and line here in front of me. Just make a line. You can sit there, brother, and I'll come and quote the word over here. Just make a line. Get right here like this and look at the, the across and just make a line beside everybody. And I'm going to come down the line and lay hands on you. Just come on up. Praise God. Jesus is the healer. Now, when I lay hands on you, you take it 